Let us pray. O God, by your Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 86, the first 10 verses, and then 16 and 17. This is a psalm of lament. The psalmist asks God to turn to me and to deal graciously in a time of crisis and threat. Beginning with verse 1 of Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me and be gracious to me, Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. New Testament, our reading today is Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. You see, Jesus has assembled a team of 12, and he now thinks they are ready. But are they? Are any of us ready for the ministry to which Jesus calls us? Listen and follow. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and 
one's foes, will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or a mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We know that wisdom comes out of the mouths of children. Sometimes, a church that loved good fellowship always served coffee after the sermon. The pastor asked a little boy in the congregation if he knew why they served the coffee. I think, said the boy, it's to get the people wide awake again before they start driving home. My friends, today's message may jolt you awake and you won't need any coffee. I pray that that will be so. You heard just now what Jesus said. Your faith, your faithfulness could cause family strife. I think Jesus meant it likely will cause problems in some families. Jesus said, You've got to take up your own cross. Assume the burden of your call to serve the Savior as a true follower of our Lord. Jesus said, you are to lose your life. Do whatever it takes to follow your call in discipleship in order to find real life in Christ. That, my friends, is not discipleship light, spelled L-I-T-E. That is committed discipleship, discipleship that doesn't stop at noon on Sunday morning. Family strife because of Jesus surely was a reality by the time Matthew wrote these words. You see, at first, Jewish Christians continued to worship with unconverted Jews in the temple and in the synagogues. But in the year 70, the Romans destroyed the tabernacle. Uh, so worship was only taking place in the synagogues. And the Jews at that point had to begin working to recover and to maintain an identity. Uh, life in the synagogues began to change. Christians were being expelled from the synagogues. A father might stay. A son could be sent away. How family life was disrupted. Ouch! Even today, new Christians from other cultures where the standard is either a different kind of religion uh, or perhaps just atheism those new Christians may often suffer from family disapproval. A few years ago, we Presbyterians in the Eastern Panhandle were sponsoring international students for Christmas time home hospitality, home stays. A young Japanese woman stayed with a family at Falling Waters Presbyterian Church and when she returned to her American college campus, she announced her Christian faith for the first time, and she was baptized. But her family back in Japan was furious. Her parents threatened to stop paying for her education and to force her to return to Japan immediately. The young woman quietly but firmly held on to her faith in Christ. Thankfully, her family finally relented and allowed her to continue uh, to study in our country. Now, 
You might say that following Jesus causes no friction in West Virginia families. Perhaps it should. In today's scripture, Jesus put his faith family ahead of his blood family, didn't he? He said, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Folks often say family first, but Jesus makes a different rule. God first. If God is first, then the Christian family's tithe or regular giving comes out of the paycheck first. If God is first, would a disciple put daily prayer, Bible reading, and weekly worship presence ahead of even things like family get-togethers? There was a time when church attendance was at its height on Mother's Day. That was back in those years when sanctuaries were quite full as a rule. But nowadays, I haven't found it to be true that Mother's Day is the biggest day in a church. Rather, there are lots of family reunions or dinners, and that's where many people are, not at church on Mother's Day. I remember a major church outreach event that was set for a certain date. But then the most numerous family in the church announced that it could not participate. No, there was, you see, a family reunion on that date. And this was the case year after year. Jesus said, Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. This is no small, meek, and mild call. This call has to do with ultimate choices made by the deepest part of us, our souls. This all has to do with encountering persons maybe in their deepest valleys. This call has to do with presenting our authentic selves to a mysterious God. This call has to do with asserting that God's love is as relentless as evil is hurtful. This call has to do with believing and inviting others to believe that no matter how deep the hurt, God's love is deeper. Jesus hopes that the call to service to adventure even will be compelling enough so as to not to scare anyone off and make the demands worth it. But maybe some heard him say something that day that made them stick around. Something that didn't get tweeted, but had it been, it might have been enough to inspire continued allegiance even these days to Jesus. And I'm talking about these words when I speak of uh, enough to inspire continued allegiance. Jesus said, don't be afraid. The very hairs on your head are all numbered. Now, this assurance matters even if you are like me, missing a few hairs on top of the pate. Even in the face of personal And familial turmoil, Presbyterian preacher Tom Long writes that four things will be seen. First, the Holy Spirit will surely be present and will never abandon us. Second, we will come to recognize that our suffering is not wasted but is a testimony to faith. Third, even in the midst of hardships, we will know that nothing can eradicate the gospel or destroy God's loving and watchful care over the faithful. Finally, while family disruption surely can take place, Jesus is not against the family. Rather, there will be times when allegiance to Jesus 
causes a crisis of loyalty and forces a decision. The gospel shakes up values. It rearranges priorities and it reorients goals. Preacher Long said this, to give one's life away in the name of Christ is to be given all that makes life free, holy, and good. I recently came across the right of congregational commitment from the Church of Scotland's Book of Common Order. I assume you remember that we American Presbyterians descended from the Church of Scotland. All of those Scotch-Irish who came trooping across the valley here bought Presbyterian values from uh, the Church of Scotland the congregational commitment uh, from that church says this, Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, some are difficult. Some bring sorrow, others bring reproach. Some are suited to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all things is given us in Christ who strengthens us. Friends, I pray that you and I will be the kind of followers that Jesus described in our scripture reading today. May we be serious, devoted disciples. May we put Christ first in all of our lives. Let us pray. Holy God, may we be molded into vessels of service to your kingdom's work. May our service to you as laborers in the body of Christ, the church, and in our individual lives, be pleasing to you. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our hymn of response uh, is, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee, the 304. Now, this prayerful hymn does not seek a sense of God's presence for self comfort, but for strength and companionship in pursuing the tasks that God sets before us. Please rise as we sing, O oh, Master, let me walk with thee.
closing hymn is 307, O Jesus, I have promised. Friends, at confirmation or at baptism, we have made promises. This hymn recalls those promises as we rededicate ourselves to serious discipleship. May God empower you to bring the good news of Christ to those who still need to hear it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.